Hello, this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Ruin 2 video, I want to do a review and share my thoughts on the game if I think it's worth your time and money. What is Ruin 2? Ruin 2 is meant to be a survival RPG with gathering, killing, building, leveling up, and exploring. And we'll get to all that in the video. The timestamps will be down in the description for your convenience. Rune 2 is an exclusive game on the Epic Store currently, and it's been on there for almost a year. I think November 2019 is when it came out with a little bit of um, issues. You can Google it if you want. I don't want to get into it in the video, but I'm personally waiting for a Steam release. The first thing I want to talk about is the world in Rune 2. When I very first started playing this game, it looked really beautiful and almost reminded me of God of War in a way, which I think is a good thing. It was really easy on the eyes, fun to look at, and fun to explore for the first few hours. There are, there's obviously buildings since it is a survival game, but the buildings are static and predetermined for their location and shape and size and all that. You just feed it materials and it builds it up in the predetermined locations, which the buildings are a little bit worth crafting and, and building up since it provides you some sort of protection from some elements that occur in the world. The other thing about world is once you scroll out and you take a minute and really realize you're going to notice that it's just a different islands. That's basically what the whole world is on the map. And these islands are broken up into levels. So the further you got, get out from the middle of the map, the higher the levels get. And I think the current level caps like 50, but we'll get to that next when we talk about progression. Other than the islands and kind of the map in the world, let's talk a little bit about exploration. Exploration is, like I said, it's exciting at first, and then you really kind of start to realize that the loot and the weapons and armor that you're getting is really the same as if you just went and hunted for relics to progress through the ages. I would like to see more events or things to go do. I mean, you, you can totally just go and like find ruins and, and hunt through them and find a chest maybe. But, you know, I just don't really see the point. I think maybe if they had like points of interest that you could say, oh, this this uh, these ruins are undiscovered. And then you go there and it's lit up and you've gotten the treasure from there or something like that. Just so you know, otherwise it's like you're just kind of wandering around, not doing much. So exploration's cool at first, but gets stale pretty quickly. So I mentioned relics and ages. What in the heck is that? I'm here to tell you. Progressing through the world, you can do different ages. And what an age is basically is it's different elements. So you have like an age of frost, an age of restoration, an age of night. I think there's like seven different ages. I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but they do different things. I think there's even like an age of fire and they all do different things that you would think like the frozen one, all the water is then frozen. So then instead of, you can't use a boat, you have to run on foot, which is kind of an inconvenience, but Hey, it's uh, it's part of the game. There's different ones. Age of night. It's really dark and hard to see. There's, there's different things like that, but they don't really do much other than change the theme of the world. It's the exact same world. Your buildings are still there and all that stuff. But in order to get to the next age and to keep going through ages, I guess, is to find these relics. You can find two to three relics. The more relics you find, pretty much all they are, or they are extra lives for the boss fight with Loki. So once you've found enough relics on the map they're marked on your map so you can see where to go and get them it's actually really easy i mean you can get them all in like 10 minutes and go to the next age if you wanted to once you found enough you go blow this horn it then ends that age and then you go into this boss fight with loki and you're probably going to die <laughs> you're not meant to kill him until you're level 31 but we'll talk about that once we get to progression and once you so once you go into this fight you're going to fight loki you're not meant to kill loki until you're level 31 but once you've either died or you know tried your tried your hardest to kill the boss or whatever, you'll then go on to the next age, and you, that's pretty much the whole gameplay loop is killing stuff, gathering, building, trying to do things to progress your character. So that's what we'll talk about next, and that is character progression. So it's an RPG. Obviously, you have a character level. So the whole point of the game is to kill Loki. That once you've killed Loki, there's nothing else really to do in the game other than maybe PvP, but I didn't really get to experiment with that because there's not that many people playing the game, I don't think. But character level is by far the most important 
thing in the game if you want to just do a quick playthrough and kill Loki and get it over with. So the way that you level up is by gathering and doing quests. Quests in this game are... They are, I don't mean to be overly negative in this review, I'm just being, this is exactly how I feel about the game and that's why I'm making this video. Quests in this game are very boring and monotonous. There's one that starts out with knock down 25 trees, and then after that, go knock down 50 trees, and then for that, go knock down 100 trees. <laughs> and it's the same with gathering ore, killing different types of monsters, that's quests. That's quests, and that's the best way to gain XP is by doing these monotonous tasks. So what do you get when you level up? When you level up, you get, I think it's one character attribute that you can put in. They have, there's like health, crit, damage, and I think movement speed. There's four different stats that you can pick from. They're not really, it's not really as in-depth as most RPGs that I've played, but I think it's cool. And I would like to see like skill trees added or something because when you very first start the game, you're going to have to, pick a god. There's three different gods that you can attune to. There's Odin, um, is it Mel, like some crow? I'm not very good with the with the lore of the gods or whatever, but the Mel and then um, Thor. So we picked Thor on our first playthrough because that's what everyone wanted to see, so that's what we did. And all you get is a, uh, a skill that works as an ultimate that as you kill stuff it charges up and then you can use it. It feels very unimpactful and cannot be developed or improved in any way other than your character attributes and um, some gear stats like that. But, you know, I'd like to see a skill tree or like maybe, you know, with exploration, like I could go find these tokens that I can then sacrifice to Thor and then Thor can empower me and I get these points that I can then put into the god skill and make the skill do more things or I don't know, just something, man. It just feels really flat when it comes to character customization and progression. But it doesn't end there. There's more in the game, and there's gear loot, obviously, that I touched on a little bit. And there's so much loot that you're going to be breaking it down in it. After a few hours, it kind of starts to feel a little bit like garbage collection. And it's just unexciting. And there's even crafting. So I'd like to see a little bit more of, like, less loot drop, which is, I know, really weird to say, right? But I'd like to see more of an emphasis on crafting. Because as you're going through and exploring, you'll find these really cool lore stones. And when you interact with them, you have a chance to then learn a recipe from them. And you can learn some rare recipes and stuff. But I just never felt the need to craft anything because... I mean, the loot just drops for free from everything, really. So I guess since we've talked about loot, I'll just uh, do a brief little kind of what is loot, what's it look like. It's like you would expect in any RPG. You have damage, and then you have a few affixes. There's different rarities, of course. I think you can get all the way up to realm items, which are legendary, that are required, I believe, to kill Loki. I didn't kill Loki mainly because, well, my save didn't transfer over in between computers. So that really was upsetting to me, and that's the point that I quit playing the game. But pretty much the whole game is grinding up to level 31 through all the quests and stuff that I talked about. And once you're level 31, getting a hold of the realm weapons to be able to kill Loki. That's the whole game. That's the whole game. <laughs> One last thing I want to mention real quick is the game does offer single player and up to four player co-op, I believe. And there's also PvP that's optional. There's a PvP island you can go and participate on if you want to. It's a pretty cool idea. I just wish that if I had a character on one of their servers that it would transfer between computers. <laughs> I asked about it and they said there's no plans for that yet. So anyway, before I go on a rant, the last thing I want to talk about, and this should be the most exciting part of the game because, well, it's my number one most important thing in any RPG and that is combat, and that's why I've saved it for last. The best for last, right? So the combat in Rune 2 sets out to be kind of a hardcore combat in the vein of Dark Souls. Not by difficulty or anything like that. But having to be mechanical with your blocks, your parries, your dodges. And then getting in attacks when the opponent's open to them, right? So let's just talk about that and how that actually plays out in, in Rune 2. So when I first read about combat... I thought, you know, it sounded really cool and exciting. Having that type of mechanical combat was something that really kind of made me want to try out the game and jump in and, and 
to have to think about my moves and stuff like that. But it really does fall flat with its parry system. You hit the button to parry and it just doesn't always work. <laughs> like it doesn't register. Like it'll be like either like a three second delay or it almost seems like it's more based on like a chance to parry instead of actually skill based. I don't, I'm not really sure if that's true, but that's just kind of what I gathered. It just felt like delayed and clunky and more annoying at times than fun. Basically you just, you kind of hope to parry. Like sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. It's really hit and miss. And then on the other side of that, you have the enemies that are blocking you and parrying you. You'll have enemies that'll sit there and just straight up, they'll block you. They'll just straight up block you. And you can't do shit. So all you do is you just back up and you look at them and wait for them to lower their arm. And they go in and then more than likely they're going to block you again. <laughs> I mean, there's just, I don't, there's no like kick or interrupt or anything like that that I found in the game. So I don't know. I think that... Oh, and the other thing with combat is sometimes you'll like Tony Hawk it and they'll shoot you up in the air. What looks cool, I don't think that it's intended, but it's kind of funny when it happens. There's just some strange mechanics overall. And I know I was a little bit harsh talking about combat and you know I wanna offer some ideas to make it better and more fun for the player. I think maybe, you know, let's not do the hardcore combat system because it just doesn't work. It just, it doesn't work like it should. How about you do a hack and slash system where you can go in there, just have more mobs that don't just hold up their arms and block everything, and just let us hack and slash through all the monsters and get all the blood and gore and loot exploding everywhere. Make the loot more exciting. Consider maybe small set items or drop less loot, but more exciting loot. That would be another thing that I think would make combat in the field of the game overall more fun. Because let's be honest, standing there waiting five to ten seconds for that enemy to lower their shield is just not exciting, man. It's really boring. <laughs> So anyway, that's Rune 2. That is the world progression combat. Let's go ahead and just do kind of a closing here and some final thoughts on Rune 2. So overall, I think Rune 2 has some really cool ideas on the surface and just needs more love, honestly. I think it needs more time and it needs it needs more. There's just it feels more like an like an alpha to me personally. The RPG systems and character development building and a bit of the exploration and excitingness that you would hope for in a game like this just falls flat. It's not as deep as I would like with just having the god skill, here you go, and then that's just it is what it is. It just, I would like to see a bit more depth when it comes to that to get more of the RPG feel. Maybe over time that this will improve. My other number one complaint, and the thing that actually made me quote playing the game was I grinded so much one day to prepare for a stream because I wanted to kill Loki on stream. It's, it sounded really fun and I wanted to share that experience with you guys. And I grinded all day on my computer I used during the day and then when I came down to stream, my save file didn't transfer over. I tried to email it to myself, but half of your save is server side and the other half is local. So with that in mind, your character save will not follow you to other computers. So if, if that's a thing for you, you need to know that. And they're aware of it, and they, I don't think they plan to fix it. So I think they said they're looking into it, so who knows what that means. Anyway, um, when it comes to the end of it, man, I will, uh, I'm will. i going to wait for a Steam release. I think when it hits Steam, I'll check it out. Maybe they'll have Steam Cloud enabled, and maybe I'll jump back in at that point. They ha there has been a few patches here and there that they've improved a little bit of, of things that needed improved, but just not enough for me to really get that excited and back into it. So I will wait for the Steam release and we'll see kind of the state of the game at that point. But hey, don't let my opinion totally turn you away from the game. If you think the game looks fun and if you have buddies that you want to play with, <laughs> I think it could be worth checking out with friends. But, you know, as far as a single player kind of trying to do what I did, I, I would probably uh, spend my money on other games that we've covered. <laughs> so I know the game's on sale, or it was on sale this past week, 50% off. I think it was $15 on the Epic Store. You know, I probably wouldn't pay more than 10 or $15 for this game. And that's only if I had at least three other buddies to play with. <laughs> that, that, other, than, other than that, I would definitely spend my money on something else. Anyway, I hope that this video was informative and helpful for you and maybe you learned something. Maybe you're like me and didn't even know what Rune 2 was until recently. <laughs> so there you go. That's Rune 2. And I sincerely wish them the best of luck moving forward. I would love to see the game succeed. It has so much potential, man. Just please <laughs> listen to all the feedback and improve the game. That's going to be it for me. 
If you enjoyed this video and all the other content on the channel, please do subscribe and like this video. It means the world to me. I thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.